How much, uh, how much work did you guys get done a little bit with Miami before yesterday's game was even played? A lot of that for me as a play caller was actually done at the beginning of last week, if that makes sense. Like once I get into charger mode, I can't kind of kind of go back and forth. But the position coaches kind of gave them, hey, when we get done with the game, this is when I need things done. This is what I need to have done. And I think they you know, did a great job of getting that done on their time during the week. For me, that was early in the week just to try to get ahead. And now we're on to Miami today. So watching the film from last night, what stood out? Any big picture takeaways? I thought the effort and energy was outstanding. And I think you th saw it throughout the game, you know, guys finishing plays, guys playing together, picking each other up, having a lot of fun playing football. Uh, that was probably the biggest takeaway for me. I was really excited to see that. One thing that Jonathan said after the game was that he liked how Kyler operated. What was your observation of how he operated? And to you, what does that operation look like? I think it's a, a couple of different things. One, it's just kind of the tempo and flow in and out of the huddle. Uh, you know, we sub a lot of personnel. We're in a lot of different formations, motions, cadences. I think he did a really nice job of handling that, and I think it allows our offense to be effective. You know, I think then the second piece of that is what happens after the snap in terms of taking care of the football, you know, trying to eliminate negative plays, you know, get us out of some bad situations, which I thought he did a really nice job of. So I uh, was very pleased with that. Has he improved with his operation throughout the year? Uh, yes and no. I, I thought it was pretty good coming into the season, you know, going through an, a full offseason, having a pretty good understanding of the offense. I think generally as the season goes, it does get better because, you know, you've just done things more and more times as you go through the year. The, play, the players, the staff, you guys all talk about the process and all the work that gets put into it. JG said after the game against the Packers, he started to poke some holes in it. Have you been able to see any similarities in the process in the games that resulted in wins versus losses? Um, it's a great question. You know, I, I, in terms of poking holes in it, to me, that's something you do win or lose. Like, there's always going to be areas in your process where you can be more effective, more efficient, communicate something better, teach something better, install it better. Um, you know, I think certainly you look for those. I wouldn't say there's anything glaring that stands out to me one from the other. We ask you about James Conner a lot, and rightfully so, and he seems like he's almost on a different level than to just simply say a running back that can really make an impact for this offense. Is it as simple to say when Connor gets rolling, the rest of his offense is hot and makes your job easier? It certainly did last night. Um, but no, I think in general, yeah. I think you know, as your when your best players play at their peak, you play better. You coach better. The guys around you play better. I think that's true. You know, I talked about this in the room. Like, you know, a lot of guys watch basketball. You look at the best basketball players, like the elite players. The thing that make them, you know, from good to Hall of Fame to guys that we all talk about and remember is how well they affected the guys that played with him. And I think he's that type of guy. I think when he gets rolling, people feel that. They want to play well around him. I, I think that's real. Throughout the year, third and fourth and short haven't always been easy for you guys. Are you seeing any similarities that it, it almost seems like it doesn't matter what you guys do, it, there's, good, there's issues. Have you seen any similarities that are causing some of those struggles? No, as you said, like we've tried a couple different things. We've had you know mixed reviews in terms of success rate. So I think we need to kind of hone in and figure out what we do best, lined up with what they're going to try to take away. But um, certainly need to execute better in those areas. I think. It seems like often the success comes handed off guy, handed off guy runs up the middle. That's I feel like fans always want that on third, and fourth, and short. Why is it not that easy? Uh, sometimes they also want to stop that. Um, <laughs> no, I, I mean, I'm joking, obviously. Um, you know, I think it's a mix. They want the, the one yard. Sometimes you're looking for the explosive play. I think the situation, the game, the score, so many different things dictate what you want to be and, and think you need to be in that area. So uh, I understand the desire from the fan base, but uh, you know, certainly a lot more goes into it from our side of things. Whether it's miscommunication or a pass being underthrown or being a great pass and it's dropped, is the answer to that when it comes to maybe some of the struggles in the passing game mostly reps? And if not, what else can you prioritize with those kind of struggles? I think reps is a piece of it. I think confidence and just understanding, you know, that it's not like I don't feel like it's broken. I feel like there's plays out there that we're making that are really good. Certainly there's more that we want to make. I think the, the hard thing and the thing you want to avoid doing is pressing or doing something kind of outside the norm to try to fix things, and then you end up creating a host of other problems. Um, you know, so I, I do think there's, there's a number of things that we're going to continue to work at, but I don't think it's a, a whole shift or massive change in how we're doing it. Jonathan said there's some things that Marv is doing really well. What are those things? 
You know, I thought he did a really nice. I mean, there were a number of times, you know, in the game yesterday where I thought he he came off the ball with some burst, got you know open down the field. Sometimes we could find him, sometimes we couldn't for a number of different reasons. Uh, but I, I was really pleased with just kind of the way he handled himself throughout the game. I mean, he's playing a lot of reps. I think he he has a big impact on the defense in terms of the way we operate on offense. So was really pleased with that a, a number of those things. He hasn't had a big game since week two in terms of yards. What has he done? He's kind of touched on. It. What has he done to impact your offense against your defense? besides catching the ball. Yeah, I think certainly the, the coverages in terms of how they want to play him, what it sets up in the run game and some of the other things in the keeper game and the things that we want to do in those areas, uh, I think are very real. You know, who they're going to put on him in man-to-man -man situations, you know, how they're going to lean the post safety, different things like that have certainly showed up over these last couple games and, and allowed us to be effective in other areas. There were a few players where the broadcast showed him kind of jogging and they were talking about that. Have you seen any concerns at all with on an effort front? No, none. You talked about how Sometimes once the play kind of gets going, your mind is automatically moving on to the next one. When you've got an instance like early in the game where it's a pick and then Connor forces the fumble and then Michael Wilson lands on it and there's all these things happening in a span of a couple seconds for someone who thinks ahead, how fast is your mind moving and what exactly are you thinking when all that is happening? It went a lot of different places very quickly. Um, you know, certainly from the, you know, oh, completion, oh, okay, tip ball, oh, no, interception, to please get him down, tackle him, to fumble, to recovery. I think all those things, you know, in real time as you're watching it. And then very quickly, you, you realize you have the ball, certainly knew it was first and 10. You know, I think they had a little delay as they were trying to figure out the clock, the sticks and everything else. So that kind of gave us time to reset. And, and in a lot of ways, it's a new, you know, it's a new series. So it's first and 10. We're on the whatever yard line it was on the left hash. And, you know, we had time to kind of reset our mind. But certainly as the play going, you're going in a hundred different directions watching that, you know, kind of unfold. You mentioned how much the position coaches have helped with looking ahead. We spoke to Spencer on Friday and he was talking about all the things that he does in advance and all that. What generally, how much is helpful and especially this, this particular week? Yeah, I, mean, I can't, I could speak hours in terms of his value to me and to our staff and to what we do as an organization. I think he, he does an unbelievable job with it. Um, and to your point, on a short week, it's going to be, be that much more important because you know one of the first people I sit down with when we put the previous game to bed is him to say, all right, who are we playing? Where do they line up? You know, who are the key players? What do they play like? You know, the, give me the basic structure of the defense. I'm going to ask a lot of questions of him. You know, he'll have tape to watch that kind of goes along with what we're talking about, and that kind of switches my mindset onto okay, here's who we are playing against. Here's where we need to go. So I, I can't say enough about him and the role that he has. So when you see this Miami defense on film really strong, especially in the passing game. What, if anything, jumps out to you? Uh, a couple different things. I think certainly the amount of pressure that they bring is real. You know, I think it was over 50% of the snaps in the game, you know, against Indianapolis. So that's a big part of who they are. I think they create a lot of havoc that way. And then, you know, I think the, the players and the talent on the back end, you know, if you're going to be great at defending the pass, those guys are going to have a big role in that. I mean, Jalen Ramsey, I, you know, unfortunately had to go against him previous to this matchup, but he's playing as good as any corner in the league and he has such versatility. I mean, you see him outside in zone and man, pressed and off. You see him in the slot playing nickel. You see him pressuring the quarterback. Uh, he just does so many things well, I think creates a lot of problems. Sure, with the third and fourth and ones with, with Clayton, JG said it looked like on the first one that Clayton kind of slipped coming out of there. Is that something you saw in real time? That it was that or anything else went into the decision to think if we do this right, we can still pick this up? It's a play I'm almost always going to feel good about. You know, it's, it's something we've, we've executed a high level a number of times throughout the last year and a half. You know, so it's one of those, especially when you know you have two downs, I feel really good and our guy's going to get that yard one or two ways. So I uh, felt really good about it. Going back to Mar for a second, do you feel like he's putting too much pressure on himself considering the expectations and all that goes into being that first round number four overall pick? I don't. I mean, I'll, again, that would probably be you – know, he'd be able to answer that better than me. Um, but, no, I, I think his demeanor, the way he's carried himself, the way he's gone out and played, I, I, I don't see that or feel that at all. I know this was Zay, Zay's first game, and he only didn't have that many snaps. Are you looking forward to ramping him up a little more, getting him more involved in the in the game plan? Yeah, and, and, and all those guys. I think he did a nice job in the role he did have. I thought he, you know, he, was, he was effective in the passing game. I thought effort was really good in the run game, you know, getting in and out of the huddle, so I was really pleased with that. How does Kyler's ability to run, either on or off schedule, impact how you call plays? Uh, not dramatically. I mean, I'm never calling a play being like, God, I hope everyone's covered and he takes off. Um, <laughs> But I'm really happy when it happens, too. So I think it's more of a, hey, we're going to put plays in that we feel really good about. And there is the added note that, hey, if we hold up in protection or 
we do create some time for him that he is able to play off schedule, that he can make some unbelievable plays that not a lot of guys are capable of. And certainly you saw that, you know, in the game last night. So it's it's more of that than it is me kind of planning or preparing for it. What's with standing out with a guy like Isaiah as he continues to get more offensive reps? I think just his confidence. Like I think you saw that. I mean, the effort and energy he played with last night was great. Uh, his engagement, his communication in and out of the huddle on the sideline I thought was really good. So his comfort level in that I think is just growing with every rep. It's, it's pretty rare to rotate guys in and out of the offensive line. Why do you guys like that right now? Uh, we did it last year as well. Um, no, I think any time that you deal with some injuries or different things personnel-wise, you're always going to do what you feel like gives you the best chance to win the game. So getting those guys in and out of the lineup is, is nothing more than that. When you're in a situation like the final drive where you're really just trying to get in secure field goal range, is it challenging at all with any sort of adrenaline when you, you're moving the chains as well as you are and you know the pace is quick? Or <coughs> maybe you want to keep the offense on the field and give it like – how do you handle and what emotions are you handling in situations like that? That's a really hard question to answer. I, it's funny, like a lot of times during a game, you try to be like almost emotionally void, which is easier said than done. But I think it's really important as a play caller. So it's like it's almost easiest when we're when I'm calling it because I don't have time to get involved in the emotions of the game. You know, certainly early on, you're thinking completions, get the first first down, get the drive going. You know, when James hit the explosive play, that's when things get tricky because the entire situation changes. Um, you're you're in field goal range, the clock, the timeout situation, so many things come into play. So there's a lot of communication from me to the staff and back. Back and forth, and then ultimately, I get you. Know, we got to get the play call in and get it get it repped. Um, but I'd say for the most part, it's it's very focused on the goal at hand. There's not a lot of time for the emotion. To that point, what is it like as a play caller though when James is just going so so good and you just want to keep feeding him, but you still can't. You still have to do it. You can't just do it too much. It's a balance, and I think, and it sets up things in the play action in the keeper game, which I think you saw, you know, com come to fruition yesterday. But it is, it's a balance of like, all right, continue to give him the ball. You also can't give the guy 50 carries a game. That's not going to bode well for him or us in the long run. So it's it's finding that balance of making sure you're giving him a chance to affect the game, but keeping him fresh, keeping the team going, and using that to show up in other areas in the you know in the passing game or in the run game.